Yeah, hey, Matt, how are you? Good, how are we doing? Good, thank you. Uh, just obviously, Illinois has got a lot of weapons. How do you go about kind of dealing with them? Uh, obviously, you know, I think a lot of it starts with, uh, in my opinion, their defense. I think their defense is, you know, really good. They, they get in transition, um, you know, off of just the defensive glass and, you know, just causing turnovers, I think. That if they're scoring a lot of points in transition or they're scoring a lot of points on transition in the offensive glass, um, it's probably going to be a tough night for you. Uh, they, they dictate a lot through their aggressiveness, their size, their athleticism on the defensive end that creates a lot of offense for them. Um, then in the, on, on the offensive end, you know, they, they obviously have um, a great guard in, uh, in, in I.O., who can break you down, can make plays, make, you know, knock down threes, uh, get in the paint, um, great at getting to the rim and finishing. Um, you know, Kofi is, uh, you have to give a lot of time to prepare for him, um, you know, in terms of, what, you know, what he does and rebounding the ball and posting deep and, you know, getting to the free throw line and scoring around the rim. And so he's a, you know, they'll, both those guys are tough covers. And then, you know, Frazier, who had a great game against us last year at our place, uh, just knows when to pick his spots, you know, uses quickness to get to the rim. Obviously, he can, you know, bury threes and he's got big time range. And so, you know, you have to be there with him. Williams is a great defender, great role player, um, does a lot of little things. And now he's really worked on a shot to where he's, you know, automatic when you leave him open, um, you, know, knocking, you know, knocking shots down. Um, you know, Miller's a guy that can really stretch the defense and, and knock down shots. He's struggled of late, but he's a he's a good shooter. Sometimes it's hard as a young guy to kind of find your way and uh, and kind of blend in um, when you're a shooter. Like, you know, you, you want those reps, you want those shots. And with all those weapons that I just talked about, sometimes, um, you know, that's a little bit hard, but he's a really good complement to those guys and will really be a good player. Um, and get into a bigger role as those guys, you know, move on. And uh, but but he's he's dangerous. You know, he's one of those guys that could have two or four in the game, and all of a sudden he could hit five threes and just kind of be the difference in the game. So you have to respect him, and we will. Um, you know, his ability to shoot. So then Corbello is a, a big piece of what they do. Um, just great with the ball, great decision maker, can get to the rim, good passer. Um, just a really good piece for them especially uh, after losing Felice. I think, uh, you know, Felice did a lot of things for that team last year, and he's doing a lot of those same things for him now. When you got back to the practice floor after Rutgers, what were your real hot buttons in terms of improving defensively? I just containing the dribble more than anything. Uh, awareness, you know, lack of awareness at times, like where our help was and just trying to get everybody to, you know, watch film and see some of the mistakes that we made that we really prepared for. I think that's the most frustrating thing. Sometimes things in the game can kind of present themselves that are very circumstantial, situational, that just, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the game, you know, produces some kind of outlier plays that haven't happened in the past. You know, that really wasn't the case in this game. You know, it's, you know, they made some, some shots. Um, they don't typically make from a couple people, but also a couple of them were, you know, wide open. A couple of the ones that were contested, you know, and they make them like, you know, you live with those. But our inability to, you know, to, to keep the ball out of the paint um, was probably the, the thing that hurt us the most. Is there anything you can put your finger on about your ball screen defense right now that simply has to get better? I mean, in terms of how that can improve? Well, you got to be able to, when the big man says something, you got to do it. Like, it's, it's not, you know, schematic. It's like he tells you to go under, go under. He tells you to down it and keep it on the side, down it and keep it on the side. When, you know, we were out there giving commands, that's what's kind of different about this situation. And I'm hearing the big guys give commands and guards aren't reacting to it to do it. So it's not, you know, it's the thing in coaching that happens is when you do something and it doesn't work, are they trying to do what you're asking them to do? If they are, then you've got to go back to the drawing board and say, you know, I need to make an adjustment here. But if they're not doing what you're asking them to do, how do you know if it's, if it's the right thing or not? Obviously, you have your past history with other teams of doing it, so you know you got a pretty good feel for it. But like when we give commands, you know we got to be able to do them. 
And then our bigs have got to give, you know, we talk about, you know, early, loud, and continuous with the commands. And uh, so it's more on us doing our job. And if we'll do our job and stick with it, now we can see how that progresses. And I'm pretty sure if we do that, we're going to be better at what we do or we would do it in the first place. But if it not, then that's when you got to, you got to be able to make adjustments. We're not in that mode right now. We're just not consistent enough um, in, in, in some basic things. And so you just got to keep drilling, right. you know, you got to keep drilling. It's not what we're doing. It's how we're doing it. Right. Right. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of teams around the big 10. Their benches are really animated when guys aren't in the game, their walk-ons, whoever it might be, or, Mm -hmm. acting kind of like sort of de facto student sections. Has that been an, an emphasis for you and your program to make sure the guys who are not, um, yeah. or is, is that something you're seeing what you want from those guys that they're engaged? Yeah. It's, I, I think all the benches, you know, around the country are really getting into it. It's something that's happened in the past where anytime guys got up to celebrate and cheer referees are waving for them to go down. It's, it makes no sense. It kind of shows you the guys that are, making the rules, don't understand it and get it. It's like, you got to have some passion. You got to have some energy. Like you can, you know, those guys are a big part of your program. You know, you got guys that are over there that are going to sub in and play. You got guys in there that are not going to sub in at all. And, but like they're a part of your program and they're cheering on your team. And so I've never understood that before why they're always getting waved to sit down when they're just sitting there cheering for their team. Um, as long as they stay out of bounds, like, you know, who, you know, who, who cares? And uh, so this has kind of opened it up to kind of show like, I think we've kind of seen some, uh, some, some benches that are having a lot of fun and, you know, cause you got to create your own energy in this situation. And so our, our guys have done a really good job with it. Right. Um, just one last question real quick about defense. Is there, is there something else? Is there some thing that can be adjusted or whatever to get that corner a little bit more closed off sometimes that the you know, opponents have gotten a lot of, threes off that kind of backside corner there where when the one guy comes in to help off the dribble, mm -hmm. that's where um, I think Mathis got a couple of his and, and whatnot. Is, yeah. is well, Mathis was eight for 28 from three. What's that? Mathis was eight for 28 from yeah. three. So like when you play percentages, right. if you can go through it and like you're speaking in theory, but I can go through all five that he got, you know? And so like guys are in help trying to stop the ball from getting to the paint. And then, like, then they're contesting him on a shot. And so one was on the back end of a, of a post-double, which was the right thing for us to do, trying to keep the ball out of the paint. Um, one was just a, a lack of concentration, and we just kind of fell asleep, to be, to be frank with you. And then we were just a little bit late getting out there. So, like, that isn't, in, in, in theory, like when you're sitting there saying fundamentally, you're in help a little bit too much is the way I look at some of those things. The post double is not it because that's, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to double the post to keep it out of there, make him pass. They get, they get into that rotation and he's at the end of it. So be it. Um, but, but the other one is just more of you have to be able to help in basketball, but you can't live in help. We're living in help too much. We're getting beat too much. Yeah. And now like, okay, what do you want? You want Monte Mathis's contested three when he's eight for 28 after 10 games, or do you want Geo Baker getting a layup? Like, you know, and then like the one thing about those shots is it keeps you off the free throw line. It keeps you out of foul trouble, you know, keeps you out of the bonus. Like there's some positives about that, but ultimately what do you want? You want to keep the ball in front of you. So the guy doesn't have to help at all. So he doesn't have a layup and then he doesn't have a jumper either. But when you keep putting yourself in those positions. And so we got to have a little bit more, not a little bit more, we got to have more pride and more determination for guys to get guys out of rhythm shooting it and then contain them. That's what good players do against other good players is that they're able to stop them in both areas and then make them score over them, especially late in the shot clock. I'm good. Thanks, Matt. No problem. Harvin. Hey, Matt. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, is, is the three-point success from your opponents here recently, is that just a direct result of not being able to contain the dribble and players getting too deep and, as you mentioned, the help? That's yeah, what, that you guys are being forced to do. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I would say that there's a, like when you go and you watch each play, like there's there's times guys like miss like open shots. Then there's guys that sometimes will make tough shots. 
you know, one's probably going to outweigh the other from a percentage standpoint, but you can get into kind of an outlier type game to where like, you know, you get a guy that's made eight threes in 10 games or how many games they played and that makes five or McKay, he hasn't made very many, but he hasn't taken very many and he makes three. So they have 11, but those guys have eight between them. Like if I was going to stick with people, I would stick with the two guys more young and Baker that both made one and Baker made his, the first shot of the game. And so those are the guys that have made more threes in their career and been more consistent from those areas. So we weren't giving it to them. Um, one was a breakdown with McKay. One was just a lack of a rotation. Um, and, and so another one was a, a contested shot that I'll live with him taking that, that he just made. So you got to give him, you know, credit for it. So, um, you know, yeah, that's, it's, it's not really for us. It's, it's, it's when it's everything is like, you know, when, when you're getting beat in ball screen defense just because, like, you're not, you know, really taking the command and, and doing it, and then you're behind the play, or somebody beats me off the dribble, and then I'm behind the play. Like, you have to have built-in help so they can't get to the paint. And when you do that and you overhelp um, and you stop the basketball, especially when two people have to do one man's job, now that ball moves pretty quick. Now you're into rotations, and that's what you want to try to stay out of. That's why you see us switch a lot more. Um, you know, we, we double the post. We, we switch some th things away from the ball. We switch one through four ball screens. Not always, but most of the time. And you want to keep out of those rotations because once you get into rotations, people that know how to play and people that know how to pass and shoot, they're going to they're gonna make you pay. And so I think that's for us is – is more important. You work a lot on rotations because it's going to happen, but you don't want it to happen a lot. So those are just some things that we have to, you know, to just to, to be better at and keep working at. And um, like we've talked about, we have a, a wide range um, of, of defensive experience. And, um, but you have, we have to have more defensive production. We have to have guys that are just simply better at their awareness, simply better at doing their job, and then at times just, you know, recognizing what's going on, especially if it's like late clock stuff and where your help is and containing the dribble and knowing the strengths and the nuances um, of your opponent. Yeah. I just wanted to ask about Ethan Morton, just where from a conditioning level and kind of how he feels physically. Where, where yeah, is, he's getting yeah. better. There's no doubt about that. Like he's a guy that's kind of ended up being the odd man out and that wasn't how we really had – it pigeonholed to start the season. You know, you still have to be productive and you still have to earn that spot. And he really helped us when we were shorthanded earlier in the year and he got put in a tough spot um, because he condition wise wasn't ready, but now he's, he's a lot better, but he's kind of in that numbers crunch. And, uh, but we need to get him on the court more. I say it every game that I don't do it, but, uh, and then when he subs in, I'm subbing him in to get him minutes instead of having him with a group that, you know, is going to help him too. So sometimes he's not in there with the most, um, I should say, the best group for him. But, like, I'm, I'm giving a guy who's playing more, you know, a rest or a blow, and, and then now he's playing, what, three, four, five minutes in the game. And I like that with guys that don't play very much. I'd rather them play their minutes, like, like together so, like, you can get out there and, and hopefully, you know, kind of get a feel for everything. But it's, it's, it hasn't been fair um, to him, and that's, you know, it's unfortunate. But hopefully we can – you know, get him some more minutes because he does some things that could really help us. You know, his ability to pass the basketball um, would really help us. But I mean, from a conditioning standpoint, is it, just, is it kind of going to be an uphill struggle for him the rest of the year? Yeah, I don't think he's ever going to get like maybe by the end of the year he could get back to where he was. But um, it, it's more of having to play without him or practice without him, and then like then you have we have a lot of adjustments with Eric coming back and Jaden coming back and then him, you know, and so you get to where guys are going to play more because of the, of the situation. And then they get a little bit of an advantage there. And, um, but you just keep working and, uh, and keep plugging, but his conditioning is better. It's not something that's not, you know, keeping him out right now. It's more, like I said earlier, like more, more situational, more circumstantial. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I had one more real quick, if you don't mind. No problem. Just, um, are you seeing the kind of balance you'd like to see from Jaden in terms of how he's getting his shots? He, he seems like he, he's done some really good things for you coming off screens, attacking closeouts, things mm -hmm. like that. Do you want him being a little more aggressive with his dribble sometimes? Or 
I wanted him to make good decisions and take good shots, you know, more than anything. Like I thought some of those threes that he took were good shots. They just didn't go down. Um, I think he had a pull up air ball one time that, um, you know, for him, it's, it's really kind of knowing what we're doing too, right. like, and kind of like understanding how things are, you know, people are defending and executing plays. So then it puts him in a better position. And, you know, if, if he can, if he can execute better, and get himself in better situations, his ability to score and his ability to get by people will really come out. And, and that's kind of where he is. You know, he's at a um, kind of early stage in his career of understanding and taking what we're running or what we're drawing up to use to his advantage. Um, but no, he's, you know, he's, I thought he did some good things the other night, you know, he had some nice drives and, you know, got to the basket and was aggressive and, um, like I said, like, you know, he needs to, to balance that with some of those shots that he took on the perimeter, you know, because they're good shots and he's a good shooter. Even though his percentages aren't great, um, that, that's going to balance out. He, he's a pretty good shooter.